So when the first Jane Doe came forward and gave her story about what she experienced at the hands of Mike Bickle when she was only 19 years old, we know that Alan Hood was one of the the first ones to really come out and say that he absolutely, without question, believed Jane Doe. He had known her for over 20 years and had said that her story was absolutely credible. Well, now we're getting Alan's reaction. He's detailing exactly what went down the second that he got the call from Jane about her story. And it was it was very impactful. We're going to get into it. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you, as always, we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Also, if God puts it on your heart to do so, consider making a generous donation to support my ministry. A couple different ways you could do that. One, hit the super thanks button on the YT video here to make a contribution that way, or join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash not by sight news. Link in the description. Joining the Patreon, you get all the videos before they hit the main YT platform. Also some exclusive links there to these topics that we discuss that I leave up on Patreon exclusively for the obvious reasons. You got to be kind of careful with things that you say here now. Also with that, you can comment censorship free in all videos and even send me DMs. So check it out again. It's patreon.com slash not by site news. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So Alan has come out now and really given his reaction to first hearing the story from Jane and, well, the mistreatment that we know at this point that she experienced at the hands of Mike Bickle when she was just 19 years old. And Alan was very honest in this statement. And he talks about how it was in the month of June. He was actually on his way to the airport at the time. He was actually going to be going to Israel and he was going to be heading over there with all three of his sons. And he was actually going to be baptizing his youngest son uh, there at the time. He was looking forward to it. They're all meeting up at the airport and he gets this call and he says, you know, normally I wouldn't have answered it. You know, I wouldn't have taken the call because I was you know, about to get to the airport. I was going to be busy had a lot of things going on, but he said something prompted me to take the call. And he revealed that that individual was Jane Doe. And as he's in the car, again, he's on the way to the airport. She starts to tell him the entire story about what happened to her at the hands of Mike Bickle. And he says that he can remember immediately seizing up, just like feeling it like in his chest, right? And he said he started to wail just wail and, and weep after hearing everything that he was hearing from her about what Bickle had done. And you got to remember, you know, this is not something that, you know, that Alan Hood was you know, thinking that well, Bickle could be capable of doing. But look at how much we've learned since this, you know, originally came out. And he said, here was somebody who looked at Mike Bickle as a hero. And he took full advantage of that. And, you know, he betrayed that trust, put out the prophecy, if you remember, that his wife, Diane, was going to die young. And he told Jane Doe that she would be his new wife and even the mother of his kids and all these things. And then, of course, there was the blackout incident that she had in the hotel room. And, you know, Mike would call her from, you know, overseas trips and tell her how, you know, you know, the same prophecy about his wife, Diane, and she was going to die young and that they would be together. And Alan told her, he said, I'm here for you. And he said, as soon as I get back into town, we're, we're going to talk more. We'll get together, whatever you need to do, but I will be here with you, you know, every step of the way. We will see this thing through. And Alan is somebody that has really continued, you know, is, is part of the advocate group and helping more victims that have come forward that have spoken out against Bickle. You know, he has been right there in the middle of it. In fact, many former IHOP KC, you know, staff have even said and credited Allen for being the one that they felt the most comfortable talking to when it came to reporting these cases, because, you know, going to other leaders like Greaves and David Slyker, they just didn't care. You know, they would say, we don't want to hear it. We don't have time. They did whatever they could to protect Bickle at all costs because this was, you know, they were part of his inner circle. 
Alan Hood may have had respect for Mike Bickle at one point, but when it came to these victims coming forward, no, he believed that Bickle should be held accountable and that he should issue a full statement of repentance, which we still have not gotten from him. And still to this day, Allen remains a trusted voice in this entire ordeal. As again, more allegations are coming out, more victims are stepping forward. We even had the other day, if you missed it, I did a video about Tammy Woods' own mom came out with this blistering statement rebuking Mike Bickle and revealing everything that he put their family through. If you remember, you know, Tammy was the babysitter for both Mike and Diane Bickle. She was only 14 when all that stuff went down. And her mom was, you know, she didn't hold back on her feelings about Bickle and the type of man that he really is. So it's important that people continue to keep this subject alive because, you know, Bickle is just expecting that, you know, sooner or later, this is all going to just go away and he'll be able to get himself right back in a full-time ministry again. And you know what? Sadly enough, there's going to be people that will actually follow him. It doesn't matter what we've now learned. It doesn't matter, you know, the obvious evidence here, none of that, none of that will matter. There, there are some people that are so sold out to man that they can do anything and the most heinous things you could possibly think of, and they'll still follow them and they'll accuse you of being a gossip. They'll accuse you of trying to take down the man of God. You know, we've heard it all before. It's just sad. It's just absolutely sad. And I'll say this too, because it's something that, well, I still believe to this day that IHOP KC needs to be shut down. And really allow all of those who have been affected, not just Jane Doe, Tammy Woods, TH, but everybody else too that hasn't even been able to come forward yet. Give them all the true healing that they need. Knowing that this organization is no longer up and running, I really do believe would do a tremendous help to all of those who have been affected. Whether they worked there at one point at IHOP KC or whether they were a victim. Is it going to be, you know, an instant fix? No. But I think knowing that the place isn't around anymore, I think that could be a real step in the right direction for trying to bring, you know, finally uh, some healing to this, maybe quicker than what we would see before. So I will put the link in the description if you want to hear Alan giving his take on his reaction to Jane Doe's news. (sighs) Also, uh, again, that link will be in the description. And I want to get your thoughts as well. You can leave them in the comment section. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. What this is, is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church, exposing the false prophets, we always want to give people the opportunity to come to Christ because time is running out. We are in the end of times and people looking for answers in all the wrong places want to get them looking towards the Lord. So for anybody watching now, if you're somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash not by site news or hit the super thanks button on the YT video here to make a contribution that way. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.